Why is high frequency ultrasound important for preclinical imaging? So when we're imaging with ultrasound, if you think of imaging um, in the clinic or with humans, we use lower frequency sound because the structures that we're looking at are bigger and the depths that we need to penetrate are much bigger. When we think about imaging in the preclinical side of things, imaging mice and rats, imagine those structures being much smaller. So we need higher resolution. So higher frequency gives us higher resolution. However, with that, we have a, a decrease in the depth of penetration. So again, this becomes important when we're imaging a mouse, for example, they're quite thin, they have smaller structures. We see them with much more detail with the higher resolution, say for example, at 40 megahertz, we'd get 50 micron resolution, but we can't penetrate as deeply as we could with, for example, 20 megahertz, which would give us a lower resolution, but greater penetration to image into rats, for example. What is the main difference between this system and other ultrasound systems? What you can see here is the system itself. So we have the screen and we have the animal handling platform. The screen itself, if, you, if I actually turn it, you can see has a thickness to it. And that includes all of the electronics that maybe are situated within the cart of other systems on the market. The screen itself is also touch screen, so you can see I can activate it. Alternatively, I can also use the mouse and the keyboard. The animal handling platform sits here. It does everything that you would expect it to do. The probe can rotate, the probe can tilt, and this can also go up and down. Likewise, the stage itself can tilt in any direction that you'd like. It also goes up and down using this knob here. And we have micro positioners here to move small movements left and right and forwards and backwards. The platform itself is also heated. So very similar to other systems, we're gonna help maintain the physiology of the animal. We will also monitor the physiology of the animal. So we're able to monitor the ECG signal by taping the paws here. And then with that, we also get the respiratory signal and we can use a rectal probe to monitor the temperature. As with other systems on the market, we have two different platforms. So we have the mouse platform that you see here. And then we also have a larger platform that would be better suited for the rats. They simply pop off using a quick connect here and we'd be able to switch it out for different species. With the different species, like I explained before, the frequency of sound becomes important. This is our 40 megahertz probe. We also have a 20 megahertz probe. The main difference between systems is the probe itself. So this is actually what we call a linear, or sorry, a single element transducer. So if you look here, you can see that there's one element. And when we're imaging, it will actually wobble back and forth to acquire the picture. Other systems on the market have a linear array. And the main difference between that comes into play when we're talking about B-mode imaging. So B-mode imaging or brightness mode imaging would be when we're imaging a two-dimensional image and watching things move over time. So frame rates come into play. And so when we're talking about frame rate and for example, a mouse heart, you might be looking at the mouse heart beating at approximately 500 beats per minute. As high of a frame rate as possible is what you would ideally like. Um, and the linear array will give you higher frame rate. However, with that comes the price associated with some of the other systems on the market. But also when you're doing your analysis and you're looking at cardiac function, most people will do that from M mode. And if you're doing it from M mode, the single element on this system or one of the elements from the linear array is fixed in a single position. And therefore the sample rate is the same between each system. So there's no longer the need for um, comparing the frame rate or the sample rate. They are the same in M mode between the different systems on the market. Moving then to other types of imaging. So we talked about cardiac. If we further talk about cardiac, we have all of the different modes that you would want for cardiac imaging. So you can see our modes across the top here. We have B mode, M mode, color Doppler, pulse wave Doppler, as well as tissue Doppler. All of those are used to look at the different ways of looking at cardiac function. If we then want to start to look at other things like tumors, we frame rate doesn't become important. Um, because the tumor is not moving as fast as the heart would be. We can image with the same resolution because we're using the same frequency. And we have a 3D motor as an option that we can add on here, which would allow you to do three-dimensional imaging of the tumors and then generate the volumes as well. So those are most of the similarities, I guess, and differences between um, the Prospect T1 and other systems that may be on the market. What type of probes comes with the system? 
So we have three available probes. I have two of them here. This one is our 40 megahertz probe, and that would be ideally suited for imaging things in the mouse or superficial structures in larger species. This one is our 20 megahertz probe, and it would be ideally suited for things in the rat or, or more superficial structures in much larger species. Um, and then we also have a 50, 50 megahertz probe, which gives you higher resolution images for things like zebrafish, smaller species, um, subcutaneous tumors, embryos, things like that, that you may be interested in looking at all of which are single element transducers. So you can see the element here. We fill the cap with water. And then when we're imaging, we can actually see the probe wobble um, across the screen here to acquire the image for us. What type of species and applications the system can be used for? Well, the system has been developed for use with small animals. Um, in typical terms, we're looking at things like mice and rats. So again, we have a mouse platform here that would be the appropriate size for a mouse or similarly sized animal. We also have a rat platform, which can be, again be used for rats, hamsters, other species like that. Um, the system can also be used for other um, different species that may be used, such as zebrafish. So you can actually put the fish into water um, with tricane. And instead of using ultrasound gel to transmit the sound, we would simply use the water and place the probe in direct contact with the water to be able to image the zebrafish, such as looking at the heart and regeneration of the heart or tumor development. Other groups have used the system to look at chick embryos as they develop. So basically shaving off again, the top of the shell, filling that with saline and being able to watch um, the chick embryo develop. The system has also been used on other species like bats, salamanders, frogs, um, kind of across the board. Again, we just think of how how far below the surface of the skin or the probe are we looking for the structure and can we can we visualize it as well. Main applications may be cardiac imaging to look at systolic and diastolic function of the heart, vascular imaging to be able to look at for the aortic arch, stenosis, models of aortic constriction, um, atherosclerosis. We can visualize the carotid arteries and build up a plaque. Um, and flow through those vessels as well. Um, looking at tumors uh, forming and, and nothing's really needed to be done. So we can image subcutaneous tumors, orthotopically implanted tumors, patient drives xenografts, as well as transgenic tumor models and looking for when those tumors begin to form. Because we don't need any um, change in the genetic uh, makeup, for example, putting in the luciferase gene, we can really study any tumor model that you're thinking of in almost any organ. When we think about using ultrasound, the sound waves have to travel through ultrasound gel or soft tissue. So we, we can't see, unfortunately, lung tumors unless they're on the outside of the lung, nor can we see through the skull. So seeing brain tumors is, is more challenging with ultrasound as well. Um, looking at things like obesity, looking at fat um, buildup, we can look at uh, many of the abdominal organs. So looking at kidneys, looking for cysts in the kidneys, um, changes in the spleen, so splenomegalia, and looking for things that are happening as a result of diseases we can see as well. We can image the pancreas, for example. We've done a bit of work with the, um, ductono, the pancreatic duct carcinoma model, the KPC model, and being able to see those lesions form, hepatic lesions, um, really anything that you can look within the soft tissue, ischemia reperfusion models in the heart, ischemia in the hind limb, um, really kind of across the board. And then looking at the eye, so again, another soft tissue, we can look at ophthalmology. We can see structures on the surface of the eye with our very high resolution probes. We can also look at flow into the retina. We can also expand the capabilities of the system by using contrast agents, so micro bubble agents. Those would typically be injected IV and we could look at perfusion within different organs or within tumors. We also have micro bubbles that can be targeted with specific ligands. So something that may be binding to VEGFR2, for example, looking at angiogenesis. Um, we also have a contrast age or a micro bubble that has a positive charge on the outer shell that you can load with different genetic material. And then by causing sonoperation, you can help do targeted delivery of genes or drugs to a specific area. So those are all things that can be done on the system. Um, further to that, we think about how ultrasound maybe is used in the clinic to look at embryo development. So again, we can use this system to look at embryonic development in utero, looking at um, confirming pregnancy counting the number of embryos, looking at embryo resorption, um, and perhaps with the embryonic lethal transgenic model, we can begin to start to visualize that. We can also do image guided injections into embryos. So there is a mount that 
we can place on the probe here and visualize the needle as it goes into the embryo, delivering a specific payload that you may want to see the effect on the embryos over time. And then obviously looking at as soon as the pups are born. So being able to assess cardiac function in the pups, I've done as early as P1, all the way up obviously through to adulthood and being able to try to um, perform a longitudinal study and look at the effects of whatever genotype you have or phenotype that you have over time. Is offline analysis possible? And what are the data formats to export? You can do all of the measurements with the system. It does come with both a keyboard and a mouse to help you with that. You can also export the data from the system. So within our data manager, you can come up here and choose the, the files that you want to export. You'd export those onto a USB drive and then import them into the software, which is the exact same software, but would be located on your PC system. You can then perform the analysis offline in your lab at home as you choose, leaving the time on the system for image acquisition rather than data analysis. Um, the data formats that come out, you can obviously export the native format that you would do the analysis on. You can take the images and export just a still screenshot in standard image formats. You can also export an AVI where you can actually see something moving over time, for example, the heart. Um, the system will also export in DICOM format for you to look at in other softwares. Um, and then you can also export to a printer if you had one connected to the device as well. Can the digital radio frequency data be saved on the Prospect T1? Definitely. That's actually something that is actually included with the system. So if I was acquiring an image and I wanted to save it, I would simply click either with the mouse or my finger on the save button. And I have all of these different formats that I can save. One of them being raw, which is your digital radio frequency data. So that comes inherent. You can set it up as a user defined um, saving um, setting. So basically when I set up a new user for different labs, for example, most of the time I'm gonna save a Cine image because that's what I can do my analysis on afterwards. However, if the specific lab was very much interested in the radio frequency data, they would set their data saving to raw. But at any point when you save an image, you can change um, prior to saving, of course, change the format that you're going to save it into, give it a label, and then you can take that and we have the MATLAB scripts to allow you to import um, the data into MATLAB to do your analysis. Are physiological parameters measured on the Prospect T1? So here we have our animal handling platform. And if I actually put my hand on it here, it is warm. I can control the temperature that it's warm to and the target temperature of the animal. So if you see my target here, I have it set to 36 degrees. The table right now is at 37, but it's measuring that my rectal probe is outside of the animal because it's below the specific temperature that we have set. However, if I hold the rectal probe, we can see that we are monitoring the physiological temperature of my hand at this point or the animal. And that data would show up on my screen during acquisition and also be saved with the images. When we prepare the animal, we'll put some ECG gel on each of the leads and tape the paws to those. And from there, we get the ECG signal as well as the respiratory signal. And from those, of course, we calculate the rate and those would be saved with the images as well. As I mentioned before, there's both a mouse table and the rat table. So again, just a larger platform for the larger species and allowing some variability in size as well. What anesthesia is typically used with the Prospect T1? I think it depends on the studies and what your animal care committee has approved. Here we have everything set up for isofluorine. So you can see I have my isofluorine coming to a nose cone. This is set up for a mouse. I'd have the inside delivery of the isofluorine and the external gas exhaust. On this system and the system that we sell with um, the Prospect T1, we do have an active gas recovery that we can sell with the system. And we would use this large diameter holder. Alternatively, if you have your own system that perhaps doesn't have as large of a tubing here, we have smaller and we have different sizes of little clips that can be placed onto the platform to hold your nose cone in place as well. So when we talk about the system, we'll talk about what anesthesia you plan to use um, and simply adapt um, the connector for that. Um, now, some people will ask, do I have to use anesthesia? So the answer comes down to what you want to image. We do have different groups which will actually scuff the animals so that the, they're imaging consciously and that's done with some groups because they want to look at cardiac function and they don't want to have the effects of anesthesia. And so basically you just scuff the animal and rather than using the animal handling platform, you would have the probe 
which you can of course hand hold um, without this connected to the system. But you would scruff your animal and you'd be able to hand hold and acquire your images on the screen as well. Can the Prospect P1 perform shear wave elastography? Um, so the system can be used to do shear wave elastography. So I don't have the setup here, but basically how it works is you have your imaging probe. You'd see the image that you want on the screen. And then there's what we call a push probe that we circle around the probe and it has another little transmit device and receive device that sits on the side. You would then within the software tell it that you want to transmit um, the, push, um, the push frequency or push uh, pulse. And the system would basically calculate and determine how fast that wave of sound takes to travel through the tissue and then return back to that same transducer. And this can often be used as an earlier measure of changes in tissue that you may not be able to see quite yet. So for example, in the liver, in the muscle or tendons, this is typically used to look for um, small changes, lesion formation starting to form again before you'd be able to visualize it because you're gonna see a difference in the, free, in the speed that the sound can travel tr through. Additionally, if you have more global changes, for example, in the liver, if you're looking at um, fibrosis or fatty liver, or basically things that are going to um, affect the parenchyma of the liver, that speed of sound traveling through that liver is going to be quite different than that of a normal liver, for example. So again, within the software, you'd place a grid over the structure that you're looking at, and it would apply after some analysis, the color overlay to show you the speed of sound through that tissue. And if obviously there was a change in one area, it would highlight that area for you. You can draw multiple regions of interest to look at the difference in speed of sound. You can also program the software to allow you to do multiple pulses or as many pulses as you want. So you can have um, an average over multiple pulses on the system. Can the system be used for image guided injections? So this is our image guided injection mount. As you can see, I've mounted it directly onto the probe. So everything moves with my probe. The benefit of this is that I can move the probe. I can rotate the probe as I'd like to get the anatomical structure of interest that I want to inject into, making things much simpler um, once I want to do the injection. So once I've positioned the probe where I want it to, um, I can then basically insert my needle. So underneath here, is just a d-clamp so again this can be used with any syringe and needle that you would like so i'm using a one mil syringe here um, the needle i have on here is an 18 gauge it's too big but it's what i was able to find in the lab so here you can see i have the ability to inject in and out retracting out of my field of view i have the ability to go up and down with the needle to hit my anatomical target I can move the needle left and right to help align it within the imaging plane. And I also have the ability to change the angle of that needle for the injection. So again, giving you the full flexibility to perform the injection that you want into the structure of interest. And then you can simply retract the needle, or sorry, if you want to do the injection, inject, advance the needle, depress the plunger, and your injection is completed. You're watching that all in real time in B-mode imaging.